So how do you know what's in a star? You look up at the star, the sun, and you say, what's up there? Well, the answer is we have to look at light. And so as we look at light, we can learn some interesting things. And so what that is called is the science of spectroscopy. All right, everybody say spectroscopy. Isn't that like a coolest word? It's the analysis of a spectrum. So today, podcast 3.5, the formation of a spectrum. Okay, so let's do it. Formation of a spectrum. Okay, what are we going to learn about? Okay, it is the study of spectroscopy. Spectroscopy. Okay, what that does is it allows the determination of the composition and conditions of an astronomical body. What in the world? Composition, all right, that means what's in it, what's in the star, and the conditions, like its temperature, um, etc. So, th what are the conditions on a particular astronomical body, the Sun, or it could be Mars or Jupiter, or whatever, and then what is in it? What elements from uh, the periodic table type elements, or atoms, specific atoms, okay? And we can analyze this. This picture right here that I have on the screen is the analysis of the hydrogen atom, um, and it has, um, it's like a spectrum. They put it through a prism, okay? In spectroscopy, we capture and analyze a spectrum. So when we point a telescope at a particular astronomical body, we can analyze the spectrum of that. Okay. Okay. And spectro just a little bit of talk. Spectroscopy assumes that every atom or molecule will have a unique spectral signature. Okay. We'll talk about that a little bit here. Well, let's talk about that. Here's the chance to visit about that. Where do the spectrums come from? Remember we said in the last podcast, it comes from the electrons falling or being absorbed into an atom or energy. And well, here's the electron right here, I guess. It could jump up or it could also fall back down. One was emission and one was absorption. But we can analyze that spectrum and we can find something different. And you know, I'm not sure I've said this, so I probably should. This would be like for a particular atom. So let, let's say that this is the iron atom right here. And so where the level one, two, and three are, are different. Let's uh, change and write a picture. So if I have a hydrogen atom, let's say, maybe his levels are like this. All right, and so to fall from level um, three down to level two, three down to two, would be a certain amount of energy for hydrogen. And if I were to do that for um, iron from level three to level two, the line would be a longer line, so this would be a greater amount of energy than, say, um, this one would be over here when this fell. Okay, and so that causes, and interestingly enough, a different signature for each element when you look at the spectrum. So let's go back to this picture. So when hydrogen, this this is hydrogen right here, this picture right here, this. Uh, line. This is the spectrum of hydrogen. What you did is you had hydrogen gas and it passed through a prism and it gave off the colors. But interesting enough, it didn't give off all the colors. It only gave off some of the colors. And these are the colors that you can see when you analyze hydrogen. And you're missing many colors. And this is the signature for hydrogen. Helium would have a different signature. Okay. There are three types of spectrum. The first is called a continuous spectrum. In a continuous spectrum, it is the spectra of a black body, something that absorbs all of its energy. We talked about that previously, right? And it is typically for objects that are solids and or dense gases. So a solid, like the Earth, is a black body, and the Sun is a very dense gas, and most stars are black bodies, and so they also. So what you see when you look at them is you see a full continuous spectrum. Notice there's no gaps, okay? The second type of, uh, of a spectrum is called an emission line spectrum, and that's the one we saw with the hydrogen just a minute ago. And here is the emission line for hydrogen. Notice the sodium is different. Hydrogen has a red line here, uh, aqua line, some blue, and then a few purples. Sodium just has two bright yellow lines. Helium here has got some reds, various things. We're going to do a demonstration in class, or you're going to make you do it, where you get to kind of uh, play around with this, and you'll kind of get to see this. And we get neon with a different set of lines and mercury. So you can kind of see how each of this is a signature of, um, of that. Okay, let's talk about this. It's produced by hot, tenuous gases. Okay, fluorescent tubes, aurora, and many interstellar clouds are typical examples. All right, so if you want to look at an aurora, you may not know what an aurora is, but we'll learn about it. And also, many interstellar clouds are examples of, of things we can get emission lines. Okay, and then lastly, there is what we call the dark line or absorption line spectrum. 
okay? And that's where the light from a black body passes through cooler gases, leaving dark absorption lines. So we can see the absorption lines. You kind of have a continuous spectrum, but with some gaps. Not lots of, you know, that, that's exactly what it is. Okay, and the black portions um, are the wavelengths that have been absorbed. Okay, and uh, we haven't learned too much about this, but these are called Fraunhofer lines of the sun are examples of these. So the, actually the sun has some absorption lines and then it tells you what the elements are. You'll see how this works. Here's a way to compare them. It'd be good to sketch this or maybe, you know, if you want to print it up and tape it into your, in your notes, that might be good too. So if you've got a spectrum, if you have a light source that is, let me lighten up my pen here. If you have a light source that's just going right through space, you're going to get a continuous spectrum right here, just right you biff or Bivgeroy, or how do you do that? And then if you've got a gas cloud that goes through it, and then you're going to get the absorption um, line spectrum. And if you have just a gas cloud, that'll give you the emission spectrum. Okay? Not too hard. Now let's go back to emission spectrum and talk. Now one thing that you've been seeing is sort of the pictures of the way they look, but scientists rarely um, like to use these pictures. What they want to do is, I've lost my pin. There it is. Because um, it's white on a white, it's hard to see. Um, is that we have it passed through the prism and actually something intriguing about this picture, and I'm going to go back to my white, how about a lighter color, it down here, is that you can see that this is 4 to 2. What does that mean, 4 to 2? That means it fell from level 4 to level 2. You can see that in this picture, or 3 to 2. And each particular falling of the electron causes the, um, a different color of light to be produced. And this is what it then looks like right down here. And you can see 6 to 2, 5 to 2, 4 to 2, 3 to 2. And this is uh, for, I believe, hydrogen, yeah. Now, another thing that you can also do is you can plot a graph of how bright they are versus the wavelength. And so it gives off four specific wavelengths, and how bright the lights are are given by a graph. So it can also be looked at graphically. Scientists love graphs, as you're getting to figure out. We just love these graphs. Okay, and I think I've already said this, but if you're trying to identify an atom by their light, each one has their own signature. And here we have hydrogen. Um, this is from a nebula. And hydrogen, helium, sodium, and neon. The nice thing about this is if we're looking at a particular nebula right here, I can match things up right here, can't I? So if, if, uh, if you look right here, this red line is found in hydrogen. So guess what? Hydrogen, and I can line up, oh, there's, this is from hydrogen. Okay, this is from hydrogen, and these two are from hydrogen. So guess what I'm going to say is in the nebula? That's right, uh, hydrogen. And then if I want to line up, say, this line right here, you know, it looks like that's down here at neon, I can then look and say neon's also in that particular nebula. And if you, you have to match up all the lines, you can kind of see this. So this particular nebula, when you actually analyze it, has hydrogen, helium, sodium, and neon in there because these lines right here at the top these lines match up with the lines of these. If there's extra lines, there would be another element in there, but it looks like in this case, this particular nebula does not have that. Okay, we can also look at of hydrogen. I think we've probably said this. This is the same type of a graph. We've got the emission line, and then we can draw the graph. So it doesn't always, scientists will actually more typically look at this right here and not this. this. They'll just look at the graph. It's a little easier, I think, to analyze. And so they'll probably look at the graph. The picture's nice over here, but it isn't necessary. Okay, now, uh, astronomical spectra. Let's look at the spectra of a comet. Here's the what a comet looks like. So this is an emission line right here, right? Because it's got more black. And the solar spectrum, notice the solar spectrum, it's not a complete black body because we have a few, um, what you call um, uh, absorption lines, don't we? And again, do we really like the pictures? The pictures are great, but actually this is how they would actually analyze it. They would do it graphically, and in the graphically they will tell you these, what are these O's and CO's and CN's? They will actually tell you what particular chemicals are present there. And then uh, you can also do down here, and this is the analysis of the solar spectrum, and it tells you what elements you find based upon the dips um, in, the, um, in the graph. So you can analyze a spectrum, the light coming from a star, and by that analysis you can determine what's in the star, its composition, and also the conditions on that star, actually the astronomical body. It could be a comet or something um, like we have on the picture here. And so you can determine so much by analyzing the light. Now, what we're seeing on the screen is light that we can see, but you can also analyze the light, the spectrum of colors you can't see, 
ultraviolet, infrared, x-rays, whatever. And so you can make this much, much broader. What we're seeing here is just a small, narrow band of wavelengths. But I can have a wavelength band that is much, much, much longer, and um, I can analyze it. And then that's just done with graphs because, of course, those colors can't be seen by the human eye. And as you do that, you can see amazing th or learn amazing things about astronomical bodies that are far, far away. So that, my friends, is the end. Bye.